I think it's time to drop a Nintendo Switch 2 predictions video. And I do recognize that, you know, there's other people probably out there making predictions videos. And I, I think the reason is that there is a wide belief that the Nintendo Switch 2 is going to be revealed this week. And yes, spoiler warning, that's one of my predictions. So with that being a prediction, I figure, you know what, since I've been talking about that all month, maybe I should get into all my other expectations. Well, let's just call them predictions for the Nintendo Switch 2. Now, I'm not going to go over all the rumors that are involved and some of the reasons that I think this stuff's going to happen, but I am going to just lay it all out there. We're going to be talking about the hardware, the features of the hardware, uh, launch dates, pricing, release timing. Uh, we're going to get into the games, both third party and first party. Not every minute game, because of course, there could be hundreds of games launched in the very first year of Nintendo Switch 2. Not just, you know, hundreds of Nintendo games, but just hundreds of games in general. But I do want to go over a lot of the key things in my predictions for it. And you know what? When it's all said and done and the dust settles, we can come back to this video and see how well my predictions did, which honestly begin in this upcoming week. Uh, if you're enjoying all the Nintendo Switch 2 content and want to stay as up to date on this system as you can, you should go ahead and subscribe to the channel. We are on our road to 150,000 subscribers subscribers and oh boy we got plenty more content coming your way so first i did talk about when this system is going to be revealed and i do think it's going to be this upcoming week in general we already have a hot chip challenge bet that it will be revealed at all this month but i like to put a specific day on things not for that bet but just because i i just have this gut feeling and i feel like it's going to be on the 18th the 18th is this upcoming wednesday just three days from when this video was originally made so if i'm right that is pretty insane that is insanely close I could be wrong. It could be Thursday. It could be Tuesday. It could be the week of Echoes of Wisdom, which is pretty doubtful, or it can end up being October or later. But I just have this feeling. I don't know why, but it's just in my gut. It's like in the pit of my stomach that, yes, it's being revealed on the 18th. So we're going to go with that. Now, this does get into the whole, well, when is this system going to be released? When is this Nintendo Switch successor coming out? And you know what? I've seen the reports. I know there's counter evidence out there. I still am going to stand by and predict that it's going to be releasing in March of 2025. I'm not going to give you an exact day yet, uh, but for right now, I do believe March of 2025 will be the release month for Nintendo Switch 2. Now, you keep hearing me call this thing Nintendo Switch 2, Nintendo Switch 2, Nintendo Switch 2. Is Nintendo really going to call this system Nintendo Switch 2? Well, in the back of my head, I keep going, well, no. Nintendo's never really used numbers in this more traditional, boring way. When they have, it's been something like 3DS that was describing a feature of the system, you know, the 3D screen. So it does feel a little weird for Nintendo to go with a number. And Nintendo has made a lot of choices that uh, would indicate that they would never decide to go this way. Super Switch, obviously, would be something more likely because at least it's something Nintendo has done from their past. But Nintendo's current president is Shintaro Furukawa, who used to be, before he ended up rising to the positions he's now in, an accountant. So he's somebody who likes numbers. He's somebody who also can look around at the tech industry and realize numbers are how consumers easily understand what something is. So I'm going to go out there and actually make this prediction. I'm not going to back down from it. I think it will be called Nintendo Switch 2. Crazy, probably wrong, but you know what? This is my prediction, and that's what I think is going to happen. Now... There's a lot to get into with the hardware, but before we dive into the hardware stuff, I actually want to get into software because honestly, what is a system without games, right? Games are why we play. So while we have a bunch of hardware predictions coming, I want to get into the software right now. So I do think the launch game is going to be a brand new 3D Mario game. Absolutely, that's going to be a thing. Uh, I do think Mario Kart 9 will be the holiday 2025 game. Now, I say that as a nice combo to Mario games for year one. I realize there could be something else, but I think Mario Kart 9 or 10 or X or whatever they end up calling it is going to end up being that massive holiday game. Metroid Prime 4 Beyond will also be the only cross-generation game, but it won't be there at launch. It's going to launch 
I want to say roughly July of 2025 on both systems with two different versions. Uh, they're going to play pretty identically, but one might have a higher frame rate. Obviously, the Switch 2 version, it could, be, it could be in 4K and, and, and more visual stuff, maybe even some light ray tracing involved. So that's kind of what I feel like. It's not going to feel like a massive leap forward type game, but it's going to look very, very nice on Nintendo Switch Two. Now, some might ask, well, okay, what about Pokemon Legends EA? That's a game we know is coming. Well, I do predict that game is going to come out holiday 2025 as well, probably in November, but I also think it's going to be a Switch-only game and available on Switch 2 via backwards compatibility, but there won't be any like major updates or upgrades to the game. I'll get into that a bit later, but that does tease the fact that I do think hardware-wise there will be backwards compatibility. Now, Nintendo will also have another first-party game published at launch that shows off some sort of new feature of the system. It could be a workout game, a party game, a sports game, something that emphasizes what that new feature is. As an example, I do think Nintendo will include at least one camera on the unit, probably on the backside of the tablet, which I guess gets to another prediction that this is going to end up being a Switch-like device. And doing so means there could be some sort of augmented reality game that Nintendo is selling day one. Now, Fall games end up being a new Animal Crossing game, and it's coming out early this generation because it's going to arrive with a plan for content support for three years minimum. So they're going to look at it as a four-year game with constant content updates. Now, that's all I'm going to stop at the first-party stuff. I could go into a lot more. As an example, I think some sort of Kirby game is going to come next year. But I'm going to leave it at that just to leave the window open. Uh, I, I think these are sort of the games they're going to focus on for uh, next year. But there's going to be a lot of third-party games as well. I think Elden Ring is going to be a third-party launch title. And I do think Baldur's Gate 3 is going to arrive, but it's going to arrive sometime in the summer. And yes, the new Call of Duty game this year will be a launch game for Switch 2 next year. And I do think this is sort of the feather in the cap moment. And I do believe that this is going to be in the actual reveal thing, which we'll get into what I th how I think Nintendo is going to reveal the system in a moment. But I do think they will tease that Grand Theft Auto 6 is coming to Switch 2. Assassin's Creed Shadows is going to probably be on the system about one month after launch, so towards the end of April. And then Breath of the Wild 4K. We're going to throw this out there as sort of one of these early-gen ports. I do think it's going to be available at launch, uh, but it's going to be both available as an update you can do to the game if you already own it, but it'll be a paid update, like $20, or they'll sell a brand-new version of the game for $60 for Switch 2 that includes the 4K update. Uh, this will obviously set us up at some point to get a Tears of the Kingdom 4K update as well, but that might be saved for, say, 2026. Now, there will be many more games, and to go over every title I think is coming could actually take me several hours, but this gives us a solid base uh, from which the rest of the game's releasing can be built around. As an example, I do believe the new Monster Hunter game is coming to Switch 2, and despite the studio closure, Visions of Mana, I believe, will get ported over just by a different studio. Now, Again, we could talk about games all day. It is what matters most, but we got to talk about some of this other stuff. Um, and some of this other stuff involves, well, how about the fact that I do think this re reveal event is going to be an event. It's going to be longer than the Nintendo Switch 2. I don't know that they'll call it a direct, but I do think we're going to get about a 10 to 12 minute presentation of some type. But I do also believe that this is just an initial event, and then it's going to mostly just be a really long explainer of what Switch 2 is with a trailer in there that they could release. And then they will actually still do an in-person event next January, January 2026, uh, where they're going to let media and other, other attendees go hands-on with the system to create in-depth previews, but it's going to start with an on-stage hour, hour and a half long presentation. You think about what they did for Switch, I kind of think they're going to do something like that again, probably hosted in Kyoto. Uh, so we'll see what happens with that. Now, getting back to the hardware and some of its features, uh, I want to focus on this one. I kind of teased it a bit earlier, but I do believe there'll be a camera on the back side of the tablet portion of the system. And this would be there for AR-based games. That's right, augmented reality coming back. And it could be used as a potential extra form of tracking if Nintendo ever decides to release a future VR headset-like feature that isn't 
Labo, you know, the whole cardboard thing. How about an actual like plastic shell? We can put it in with the lenses and then, hey, you have this extra camera. You can let that camera be visible. You can combine some other components and make a compelling VR experience. Just throwing that out there as a possibility. Not that Nintendo will actually do it, but I do think the extra camera will be there for certain for AR, augmented reality based things. The Joy-Cons are still going to use rails, but will also have a form of electromagnet connection to keep the new controllers more secure to the system. And this actually fixes a problem called Joy-Con Wobble that we have on current systems. Uh, however, the new Joy-Cons will be bigger and more ergonomic while maintaining their sideway play style with the SR and SL buttons. But because they are bigger, the rail system is bigger too. And as such, the rail is not compatible with older Joy-Con. Now you might go, well, why do they need a rail if they have, or why do they need a rail if they have an electromagnet system? What happens if your system dies? Electromagnets require power. If the battery dies, there's no power and the controllers would fall off and you could easily lose them. That's why I think they'll still be a traditional rail system with a lock button. But again, there'll be electromagnets that keep it even more secure to the system. Now, I do think there will also be some other really, really neat things with the controller. It'll feature bigger and better control sticks than we got on Joy-Cons, but they're going to be fairly standard joysticks, no hull sensors. They cut cost a little bit there. And unfortunately, I don't think, at least on the controllers that you attach to the system, that there will be analog triggers, though I do believe the face buttons will be bigger. And they will keep the plus and minus button and the capture slash share button, but they're going to add one other button besides the home button that gives access to a quick menu. And I do believe this quick menu will allow you to do in-game pauses without closing the game and also enable you to access a feature similar to quick resume on the Xbox series. I also believe the controllers will have improved gyro controls, although I don't think they're going to actually improve the rumble that much over what we got in the base switch. Controllers will also have colored buttons Sort of. I actually think the buttons themselves are still going to be black or dark gray, but I do believe the letters on the buttons will end up have co having colors that match up with the Super Nintendo Entertainment System. The screen of the system will end up being an 8-inch 1080p LCD panel, and I do think they're going to cheap out a little bit on this, but it will feature a few extra features besides the resolution. I think it'll support variable refresh rate and HDR10, which will make it a noticeably better experience than the Switch's current LCD screen, but also still leave a clear upgrade path for a future revision that involves an OLED panel that they can charge more money for. Uh, so I do think that is interesting. I think they will keep the surface style kickstand that we have with the Switch OLED, and I do believe it'll feature backwards compatibility, and it's going to have one cartridge slot for that physically. So it's going to be one cartridge slot that you can put your old Switch games in, but some sort of notch like they did with the 3DS or something, some sort of just variants that will not let you put a Switch 2 cartridge in a Switch. Uh, but yeah, so I, I do think that you will just put both types of cartridges, Switch 1 and Switch 2, in one cartridge slot. I think they will have a combo headphone microphone jack on the system and on the new and improved Pro Controllers. That's right, an accessory that will launch day one. And the Pro Controllers will have analog triggers. So they will still have analog triggers as an option for games, but it's mostly going to be for docked mode using a pro controller. And while I don't think something like, you know, this is kind of software wise, I don't think something like Miiverse returns. I do think Nintendo will reinvigorate Miis and maybe rebrand them a little bit into something that gets away from the Wii era, but it will give us more customization options for making our Miis. Now, why? I think there's going to be a form of street pass. Remember Street Pass? Yeah, I think that's going to come back. And with it, associated software, kind of like they had on the 3DS, that will be packed in with the system. It could unlock puzzle pieces that can complete pictures we could use as themes on the system, you know, backgrounds at least, on the home screen, or some other form of unique experience. It's just something I think is going to happen. That also means that I do think Nintendo will at least let us theme our systems and that we can put custom backgrounds on the home screen. I don't know if they're going to do overall themes, but I do think custom backgrounds is something that Nintendo will allow. Now, I do think they finally do this for good. If you're going to have that headphone combo microphone jack, then local voice chat and messaging combined with the ability to make groups. 
I think that's going to be present here. And you can also chat and join these groups through the phone app, along with a calendar feature to plan future gaming events with your friends that they can optionally sign up for. This is something they actually planned to do originally with the Switch way back in the day. They never did it. I think they figured out the kinks, and they're bringing it to Switch 2. Now, power-wise, I suspect the system will be between a PlayStation 4 and a PlayStation 4 Pro, somewhere between them in handheld and somewhere better than that in docked mode, maybe up to a Series S level, but I'm not so sure it'll be quite that strong, but it's going to be close enough. DLSS is going to be present, and I feel like it's only had the surface scratched on what it can do since no game has been required to use it, but I think every game, essentially on Switch 2, is going to end up using it in some form, and we're going to see some pretty impressive results. I think they launch with only one SKU to simplify manufacturing with the plan for a second SKU to come by the holiday period. I think the launch SKU will be a full physical system, takes cartridges and everything, with 256 gigabytes of internal storage, and I believe a second cheaper model will launch during the holiday period, and that will be a digital-only model. Now, at launch, the price will be $399.99, and the cheaper digital model will be $349.99. As I predict, next holiday will be the holiday the original Switch, OLED Switch, and Switch Lite end up getting price dropped, thus making this seem like a really good deal, sliding in at that $350 price for a digital-only model. I think that's going to be sell pretty well for Nintendo, even if it's something you don't want it to do. Now, look, there's a lot of other predictions we could be making for this system, specific features, specific operating stuff, stuff, uh, improvements to the eShop. I do, I will predict the eShop will be a local application on Switch 2 and thus will run better. I don't know it's going to be organized any better, but it will run better on this system just because it'll be a local application. But besides that, I think I'm going to leave my predictions right there. What I want you guys to do, though, is obviously go down to the comments and tell me all of your predictions for this system. And where do you stand on the things I said about it? Am I just way out of left field and you think I'm insane? Or am I on to something here? I guess we'll find out, won't we? Thank you so much for tuning in. I am Nathaniel Rumpeljance from Nintendo Prime, and I'll catch you in the next video.